to talk about Checo. Yes. Yeah. While while admitting that his race performance today was decent, he qualified P16, finished P7. Um, this is not what we need out of Sergio Perez. And this is not a man deserving of a two-year contract extension, especially in light of the fact that Mc- McLaren is so dominant and competitive right now. Um, to but, start... The- but Go I want to... I want to stop... Because I don't think it was a good race. Like, he didn't, like, he, I, I get he moved up the grid a lot and he got in the points. Good for him. But yeah. he's driving the Red Bull. And the Red Bull is so fast. We've seen what Max can do with the Red Bull. We've seen Max make up a lot of places with the Red Bull. So why isn't Checo doing it? He has the same exact car as Max. And I don't think he had, like, a great race today. I mean, he definitely didn't have a great race and took advantage of other people having worse races, which ended up getting him, you know, into P7. So you're right. He did not have a great race. And let's, let's, like, this guy started with four podiums in five races to start the season. He finished P2 three times and P3 one time um, and finished in the top five in the first six races. But since then... He's had two retirements. Uh, He finished P17 at Silverstone, where he was lapped twice, um, and in two P7s, including today, and two P8s. Um, He's qualified. I mean, we we all know that the the stats of, like, Logan Sargent has outqualified him so many times this season, and Logan Sargent is in a Williams that is not very good, and he's in a Red Bull. Um, But he's qualified in P11 in Imola, 16 in Canada, Spain, and Hungary. Um, He he, he qualified P8 in Canada, um, P7 in the Austria Sprint, and P8 in the Austria Race, and then obviously P19 in Silverstone. And he's currently um, 141 points behind Max Verstappen, which is not where you want the second Red Bull driver to be. He's currently seventh in the Drivers' Championships. He's one point behind Lewis Hamilton. He should be many more points ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Um, And it's... It's just, it's really bad. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is attributable to his qualifying. Like, he's not doing well in quali. He's starting at the back of the grid or middle of the grid, whatever. And then he has to make up so much space. And when he's not performing well and in the car, he he can't do that. And he's not going to be competitive because of his qualifying. And And I don't like the argument of like, oh, well, he did really good for where he qualified. But no, he's in a Red Bull. He should be out qualifying Logan Sargent. He should be Mm -hmm. doing better for what he's what he has to work with and for his contract. Like it's so wild how people are still putting stock in him of like, oh, but he's a really good driver. Oh, he's just having a little bit of a struggle. It's like where I don't see it. I have not seen him deserving that seat all season. And I know he like the first few races he had podiums, whatever. But you have to do it all season long, and you have to Mm -hmm. qualify well. Qualifying is so important in this sport because it sets your grid and it sets you up for the race. And if he continues to fail on Saturdays, like, it's just, it's not, I don't think he can stay at Red Bull. I, I think it's so dumb that they gave him two years. They should have waited to see how his season went, and they should never have extended him two years. No, I, I fully agree with you. So um, Helmut Marco signaled at some point throughout this weekend that they're going to look into what's going on with Checo during the summer break. And I feel like, um, and, and you can push back on this, but I feel like there are like three main options for what Red Bull is going to do. Option one, they do nothing. Checo attempts to dig himself out of the slump like he has the past couple of years and, you know, is, is continues to be somewhat of a disappointment, but gets closer to top five finishes. Option two, they tear up the two-year contract and sign somebody else for 2025. Hey, Jim Carlos signs. And then that kid doesn't need another option on his plate. He can't. But here's the the other option is tear up the two-year contract and fire him midsummer and promote either Danny Ricardo, Yuki Sonoda, or Liam Lawson into the second Red Bull seat. And that opens the door for Lawson to get on the Formula One grid this season, um, which everyone is itching for him to to get on the grid in the Red Bull family. And it's just really hard to, you know, find a place. I saw somewhere, and I, I think this has to 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 be nonsense, but somebody was saying that Christian Horner wants 
Liam Lawson in the second Red Bull seat and Helmut Marco wants Yuki Tsunoda in the second Red Bull seat, which I can't believe because everything that Helmut Marco has ever said about Yuki Tsunoda has signaled that he'll never that race he, for Red that, Bull. That he's that he's never going to do it. He's never actually going to be considered. And so much of like the media lately has been trying to like fluff up this idea of Yuki driving for Red Bull. And I'm like, stop trying to make him like, don't set him up for disappointment media. Like, I, I really, I don't see Yuki driving for the main Red Bull team. Um, and I, I, I can see, you know, Liam Lawson hopping into the second Red Bull seat ahead of him. But I also yeah. could see them just saying, screw it, let's put Ricardo in for the rest of the year, put Liam Lawson into the set to, to V-Carb and then reconsider, you know, at the end of 2024, who's going to drive where in 2025. <sighs> I mean, honestly, I think they'll all, I, I don't think they'll do anything because they didn't do anything last season and I don't think they'll do anything this season and just it is what it is. They'll let him, if anything, I think they would pull him mid season next season, but I don't think they'll do anything. The Red Bull's already struggling with all their, you know, issues. So why add one more thing into it? You know what I mean? I right, think it's right. super interesting how everyone is rooting for and thinks Danny deserves the Red Bull seat. Like, Liam, like, if you think about it on paper, Liam Lawson is untested. Yes, he drove for in a AlphaTauri last season for a free races for Daniel Ricciardo, but he's very, very much so a rookie. And mm-hmm. so are you going to take Checo out and put Liam in? Like, you're probably not going to get much better. So that, to me, leads that, like, they would move Danny or Yuki up and then Liam would take a V-carb seat. Right. But Yuki has been outperforming Daniel all season in every aspect. He's dr- like he, every race, not every race, but almost every race he has finished ahead of Danny. And yeah. to me, that's what you would do. That is what's fair. You're the high performer on your team. You're pulling in the most points. You get the promotion. But I don't think that would happen. I think they would take Daniel. Yeah. I, I also think that they would, you know, they, they would look at it and be like, well, on paper, Yuki's done better, but it's Daniel. And like, you know, Lawson, he test drove Max's Red Bull last week, sometime in the dis- not too distant past, and was like within two tenths of Max's qualifying times. But if you think about it, before they fired Nick DeVries, that's also the same margin that Daniel was in when they put him in the Red Bull right. car. So it really, you know, that that statistic means nothing. It all really depends on what happens in the actual race. And I, but and I, I do think that in in the sense of you know familiarity and what I don't know if this this wouldn't guarantee anything, but I think in the sense of like familiarity and known quantities, I think that they would take Daniel and promote Daniel back to Red Bull over yeah. Yuki and keep Yuki at Vicar with Lawson. Um, and I do Agreed. think it's looking more and more likely that we see, I, I don't know about likely, but I think that the, the better option um, is, is either option one, they do nothing and we're in, you know, Red Bull is miserable and annoyed. And, but I, I also think that unlike last year where Max was up 8,000 points ahead and was carrying the constructors battle as well. That's a I fair think point. that the other, the other thing to consider here is what is going to be best for Red Bull's chances in the constructors championship. Cause McLaren's not going anywhere. No. Ferrari's happy picking up what points they can. I've always said that Mercedes is very sneaky in the way that they, you know, get solid amounts of points while having an anonymous races. So I think it's really can Checo help, Red Bull to another constructors championship and I don't think the answer is yes and if the answer is no then I think they if they agree that the answer is if Checo can't do it then they'll put somebody else in the seat who they think will be who will have a better opportunity yeah man I mean now that McLaren's so much closer and they're you know consistently both landing high in the points that's a good point is that like last season Max carried the entire team they pretty much didn't even need Checo they didn't yeah. have Checo um and this season they definitely need their second driver Max can't do it all themselves and Christian Horner is so freaking competitive again high performing athletes high performing teams yep he's not just gonna be like oh we'll just ride it out I think he would jump the gun I just I don't know I I just I don't know because they keep preaching like we believe in him and we've given him a contract and this is our plan and this is our strategy whatever but 
Who knows? So he's been saying that, but Helmut Marco has been saying that we yeah, will consider during the summer Helmut break. Marco and I think says that Helmut a Marco. Lot of stuff. Well, yes, he does say a lot of things, and we know that he doesn't love Checo, but I do think that this is a situation where they will take a hard look at the Constructors' Championship chances, yeah. and I think that they might actually do something, whereas last year, they're like, why are we giving this man another one-year contract? And then he was kind of better going into like the latter portion of the season. Yeah. But also, your option, too, to jump to that one, Carlos Sainz, like, if I'm him, I'm not saying it has to be Carlos, no, but I, no, I'm no, no, saying no, but that it they could, could look for another guy in 25 and Carlos would be an option because he hasn't made a decision yet because he's, I don't know, going to get ready to watch the Olympics all summer. Not another sporting event for him to watch. <laughs> um, but don't think that he, again, maybe I'm weird, but the team was like, yes, we're interested. We're going to kind of talk to you, but just kidding. We're actually going to really early sign Checo and give him two years. So it's pretty much like, go away. Why would then he come back and be like, oh, yes, yes, I would love to drive for you. Thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I I, 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 I can see that. So, I, you know, it may not be Carlos Sainz. It might be another driver on the grid, question mark. I don't know who, who it would be. Um, but I, I, I do think that the season will end with Checo not having a two-year contract with Red Bull going into 2025. Um, and whether that means that he will leave after, you know, during the summer or, you know, elsewhere. I think we might, I, I honestly think that there's going to be an emergency podcast episode in our future in the next few weeks. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. 